Hi, this is William. Welcome to Flyspoke. And uh, today, I'm tying a fly as a request from a fellow from Massachusetts. Uh, he fishes out on the Quabbin and uh, likes to troll likes to troll flies for big landlocked salmon that they have there. And this fly right here is called the 9-3, and it was created by Herbert Sanborn, and he's from Waterville, Maine. And the way it got its name, so the story goes, is, is on one of the first few outings uh, using the fly, um, Mr. Sanborn, he, he landed himself a 9-pound, 3-ounce landlocked salmon, hence the name 9-3. So um, I'm taking a little bit of liberty here. Generally, it's tied on a smaller hook, but this is a genuine partridge, Carrie Stevens 10X long, size 4 hook. So to give it a little bit more uh, uh, rangely feel to it, um, I went ahead and used the big hook. So uh, um, we'll give it a go. So this is what uh, one of those big Carrie Stevens hooks looks like. It's a uh, 10X long. This happens to be a size 4. And um, I've already wound some black ADOT uni thread on. Don't need to uh, don't need to fill in every gap with this. I'm going to use some mylar tinsel, which will which will fill in nicely. And I'm going to use the silver side. So I just tie it in facing down, and I'm going to tie it so that it runs right along the hook on my side and I'll show you the return eye as soon as I get this on and all I'm trying to do is make a nice even even wind to the front and to the back, secure down the back well. You don't have to have uh, touching turns touching each other there. So anyway, there's the uh, return eye right there. So even lightly, I'm just filling in some of that space with the with the return eye. And then I'm just going to put my tinsel on. Now it goes right to the bare hook, right behind where I have my thread finalized. And I just make even wraps, slight overturn of the wraps. Pulling the mylar so that it just stretches fine as the body. These hooks tend to wobble a little bit, so you steady them when you're making your turn. Originally on these uh, Carrie Stevens, she would glue everything together using certain components in the cheeks and things to glue together, and then with white tying thread as the base, you do everything in white and put all the components on. But the unique part was she didn't use a vise. She glued them, put them together, and then tied thread where it needed to be tied and did everything in her hands. Okay. Trim that. And I'm just going to cover the very end, just with a very, very nice covering so that there's no way it can come apart. And it's okay if I build up a little bit, and that'll give me a nice straight line when I'm putting on the next item, which is the white bucktail. And the white bucktail, what I want to do is I want to choose a pretty fine bucktail. I don't want the hairs to be 
too heavy and I also don't want to use too much and this is going to go on as a wing now you can put this in a stacker but you'll create a paintbrush effect and what I like to do is I like to pick through take out any uh, any damaged hairs you know just take a little more than I think I need and and then just work on it don't don't put it in a stacker because a paintbrush is not what you're looking for and just take out if there's anything too long you can remove that and replace it in and just keep looking and you'll see them you know I use this uh, I use this optivisor thing you can see it in the video um, because uh, it really really helps to see things like this in individual hairs okay so now this here what I'm gonna do I got them pretty uniform what I'm gonna do with this so I want this to go just to the back of the hook right there like that I'm going to grab it right where I want to tie it in and I am going to trim it. Lay it right on the top, right where I want it to go. Also notice I finished here back a little bit to the back of the wrap right next to the tinsel so that I'm not tying in the bucktail from the tips. I'm tying in the bucktail back a little ways and then that's going to go flat right on like that. Pull out anything you don't like. And now if I wrap forward like this. It's going to be very, very securely tied in. You see you got one down here? Just take it off. Don't worry about it if... Uh, Just remove it, and this should run right along the top of the hook like that. There we go. Okay, next thing going in. I'm going to take three bright green saddle hackles. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay the three right on top of each other with the tips being the exact same length. All facing down. Measure so that they're the identical same length to the bucktail. Hold this very tightly like this right here, right where you think your measurement is going to be. And you can start just stripping down and just removing and removing the barbules. And then I'm just going to trim way up, get rid of that. Then I'll do a, sort of a final cleanup and test. Is that the right length? A little bit shorter. Now, a tip I can give you about when you're working with things like this is you can pre wet them and shape them and let them dry, even give them curves by using different diameter bottles and things to let them dry on. I do that a lot with uh, golden pheasant crests. 
Okay, now, unique part of this is that these are going to get tied on flat. Mr. Dr. Sanborn felt that tying them on flat gave them more action in the water. Just play with them until they're lying fairly flat on top of that bucktail. Okay, let's trim off the remainder of the stems. And the next thing is, we're going to take two black saddle hackles. And we're going to put them inside to inside, measure them to be for the same length, real webby part. I'm going to leave it on. And again, this is going to be the same length as the green. And I'm going to tie these on standing up. All right, trim. You can see how you get a very distinctive white green to black, white belly of the smelt, green flank, very dark black top that the smelt have. And the final feather is going to be uh, some jungle cock nails. I'm going to put those on for eyes. And what I do with these is simply take them, pair them up together. Just lay them exactly together. Pick two matching first and then lay them exactly together. And then when I trim, I trim them both at the same time. That's going to give me my exact tie-in point. And what that'll do is make them perfectly equal on each side. Now let's put the first one in.
even looking head using the 70 denier thread really helps with being able to smooth and fill in I look around I make sure that all sides are looking good and covered but a nice ramp a nice smooth ramp Okay, so let's make a whip finish. Trim tight. Now for this fly, I would probably go four coats. I'm only going to put one on now, of course, but I would probably go with four coats to really make the head nice and shiny. Let each one dry thoroughly. Have these uh, foam blocks with, uh, you can see them with um, toothpicks. I'll stick through the eyes of the hooks and I'll just I'll hook my flies right in like that. on these foam blocks my friend Leo gave me. Okay. A 9-3 trolling fly. There it is.